Topic four, disclosures. As with many, if not all the sections of our financial statements, there are significant disclosures for financial liabilities. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna focus on the disclosures for financial liabilities, but not necessarily the disclosures required for all the other items in liabilities and equity, but rather for financial liabilities, these are giving the users the financial statements, the readers, the potential investors, the current investors, management, uh, analysts, everybody, you know, suppliers, information about what do you as a corporation owe? What is the economic reality of your potential outflows, your actual and your potential outflows? So we need to let them know about how are we recording those liabilities, thinking back to topic one, are there items that require fair value? What types of liabilities, financial liabilities do you have? What are those legal terms? Have there been any defaults? They want to know what risk are you as an organization presenting? Because this is important to our users of the financial statements, it's important for us and we'll do a relatively short video on this for the importance of disclosures with respect to financial liabilities. For our provisions and contingencies, they absolutely must be separate on the financial statements. They cannot be lumped in with payables or accruals uh, because that may be misleading to the users of the financial statements. Any items that require significant judgment, you know, numbers of estimates, uh, rates uh, and dates used, those must be disclosed separately. There must be a clear movement because this is a statement of financial position, a balance sheet account, a reconciliation, a reconciliation must be shown um, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and any additions or, or settlements or changes in estimates are clearly demonstrated throughout. We have to let the users of our financial statements know everything. Uh, maybe not the best testable, uh, item, but when in doubt, disclose. If it's reasonable and prudent and gives uh, the user fair representation of what the economic reality is of the corporation today, chances are we're gonna need to disclose it when it comes to uh, our financial liabilities. Similarly, because our financial liabilities, remember, thinking back to topic one, they're financial because they'll result in a, an economic outflow of cash, we need to tie this back to our statement of cash flows. Uh, specifically, which portion will be leaving us from operations and which ones will be leaving us due to financing activities. A question here, for a regular, a standard note payable, which of the following would not be required to be disclosed? A, stated interest rate. B any defaults on required payments. C, fair value of the note. D, expected market interest rate on the date of maturity. If you said D, expected market rate and market interest rate on date of maturity, you would be correct. Remember the hint I gave just a few moments ago that if it gave the user insights on the current economic reality, the current economic reality, when these financial statements are being produced, then it will likely be relevant to your user. We'll say it probably always will be. Well, first of all, do you have a crystal ball and can you, do you know what the expected market, market interest rate would be on the date of maturity? You know, perhaps we could use some fancy models. We do that for some other things here and there. We'll get, get to that later. You know, Black Shoals may, may ring a bell, but we are not expected to reflect um, the anticipated uh, expected market interest rate on the date of maturity. That is not required. We need to let them know what is the current stated interest rate? What are defaults? What's the fair value of the note in today's dollars um, versus providing a largely irrelevant guess? So again, best answer, best response, 
absolutely required. I would encourage you, uh, as you progress through, this is the last video in this current series for this chapter, as you progress through, I encourage you to really synthesize and understand these mini topics and understand the why behind it and really tie back to reflecting the economic reality, presenting the users with a fair and appropriate um, position of where the company is right now. And I would encourage again against memorizing you know, think about what would you as a user want to know as far as disclosures go and kind of tick through these lists and think yes or no. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next chapter.